Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths App by Dr. Tania Bose. So before this I have published four videos on lattice. So now today's video will focus on upper bounds and lower bounds of a subset in a coset. So let's see what is the definition of an upper bound. So an upper bound says that if s comma less than equal to be a partially ordered set then let A be any subset of S. If U is an element of S such that A is less than or equal to U for all A belonging to A, then U is called an upper bound of A. So that means before this, in the last video, I talked about maximal, maximum, minimal and minimum elements. So when we were talking about those four elements, we were considering the entire haze diagram, that means the entire coset. Now, when we are talking about upper bounds and lower bounds, we are only concerned with a particular subset within the partially ordered set. So, we want to choose the greatest element in that particular subset. So, if any element u is such that all other elements are less than that u, less than equal to, so you should take care of the sign that all the elements a such that A is less than equal to U for all those elements A belonging to that subset, then U will be called the upper bound of A. Right? That means U is itself its upper bound because we have the less than equal to sign. Right? Similarly, what is a lower bound? A lower bound is that if S with less than equal to be a partially ordered set and A be any subset of S, then if L is an element of S such that L is less than or equal to A for all A belonging to capital A, then L is called the lower bound of A. That means again if we are taking a particular subset within the partially ordered set and if that element L is less than all the elements of that subset, then L will be called the lower bound of A. So you will find that all these definitions are very similar. But when we were talking about the maximum, maximal, minimal, minimum elements, we were concerned about the entire coset. So we were choosing the greatest element and the smallest element within the entire coset. But now we are not working in the entire coset, but we are particularly working on a particular subset. The subset is a part of a coset. So when we choose the greatest element among those, all the elements which are greater than that particular element, then they are called the upper bounds and all the elements which are less than that, those particular elements, then they will be called the lower bound. Right? So let's clarify these definitions with the help of some exercises. So we need to calculate the upper bounds and the lower bounds in, in these subsets. And this is the coset given to us, the Hayes diagram is given to us. And the first subset that is given to us is e, e comma C. That means in our subset A, we only have these two elements. So we need to find out who are the upper bounds of this subset. So what is the technique? First of all, we will calculate the upper bounds of each element and then we will see who are common to them. Right? So let us see who are the upper bounds of the element E. So the upper bounds of the element E are who are the upper bounds? Upper bounds were all those, if we go to the definition of upper bounds, it said all those elements A which are less than or equal to U for all A belonging to that subset. So we have to choose the less than or equal to sign. That means if I'm selecting the upper bounds of the element E, E itself is its upper bound because there is equality sign, right? Now let us choose all those elements which are higher in rank than the element E. So which elements are up from E? So it's the only element G is there. Right? So you can see that E is connected with G and G lies above E. So the upper bounds of E will become E comma G. Similarly, let us calculate who are the upper bounds of the element C. So C itself is its upper bound, so we will write C first, and let us see which all the which are all the other elements which are at higher rank than C, and it should be also connected to C. 
So you can see E is one of those elements which is connected to C and it is at the upper triangle than C. F is also greater than C. You can see G is also greater than C, right? And you can also see that H is also greater than C. So that means all the upper bounds of C are C, E, F, G and H. Now which elements are common to them? We have E and we have G. So that means the upper bounds of the set A will now become the elements E and G. Right? Okay. Let's talk about the lower bounds now. So for lower bounds, we have to check all the elements which are lesser than those particular elements. So let us calculate the lower bounds of the element E first. Now who are the lower bounds of E? E itself is the lower bound and then we have to write all the other elements which are lower than E. So C is one of those elements from the haste diagram. A is one of those elements and B is one of those elements. Right? Similarly, who are the lower bounds of the element C? C itself is its lower bound. A is the lower bound and B is the lower bound. So you will only select all those elements which are less than C. So now who are the common elements? C is common, A is common and B is common. So the lower bounds of set A will become it is equal to the elements are C, A and Right? I hope it is clear to all how to calculate the upper bounds and lower bounds. We'll do one more example. And let me just clear this portion. So that means whenever we are talking about the upper bounds or the lower bounds, we are not concerned with the entire four set, but we are just choosing a particular subset from that four set. So the next set is set B, subset B, which contains the element C, F and D. So our first job is, let us calculate the upper bounds of the element C. So upper bounds of C we have already calculated, so I am not repeating it again. So the upper bounds of C are C, E, F, D e, and X. Right? Let's calculate the upper bounds of the element F. Now who are the upper bounds of F? F itself is its upper bound and all the elements which are above F. So we have G as well as H. Right? Similarly, who are the upper bounds of D? The upper bounds of D will be D is here. So the upper bounds are F, G as well as H. So the upper bounds are F. G and H. Right? So now we have to calculate the upper bounds of the set B. So the upper bounds of set B will be now which elements are common to all the three? F is common, G is common and H is common. Right? So these are the upper bounds. Now when we talk about the lower bounds of this, so let's talk about, so I'm writing the lower bounds with the symbol LB. So who are the lower bounds of the element C? All the C itself is its lower bound and all the elements which are lesser than C. So it is A and B. Now who are the lower bounds of F? The lower bounds of F are F itself. Then all the elements which are lying below F. So it is C, D, A as well as B. So C, D, A and B. Then who are the lower bounds of the element D? The lower bounds of D are D itself, only D, right? So, who are the lower bounds of the set B then? So, is anything common in all the three elements? Nothing is common. So, that means the lower bound is at empty, right? I hope this exercise clears the definition of upper and lower bounds, right? So, let us do one more example. So the answers are given here and you can cross check them. Okay, let's see the next one. 
So in this exercise, this is your case diagram. The process is given to us. And the subset, the first subset is A, that is, which is containing the elements 5 and N. So let's talk about the upper bounds and the lower bounds. So the upper bounds of the element 5, which elements are the upper bounds of 5? The 5 is located here. So you can see the upper bounds are 5, then we have 10, then we have 25, then we have 50, then we have 20 and we have 100. So you have to see which all elements are connected with 5 and they should be above 5, right? Now, who are the upper bounds of 10? The upper, this is 10 located here. So, the upper bounds of 10 are 10, 20, 50 and 100. Right? So, we need to calculate now the upper bounds of set A. So, the upper bounds of set A are all the elements which are common to them. So, 10 is common, 20 is common, 50 is common and 100 is common. Right? So now let's talk about the lower bounds. So who are the lower bounds of the element 5? 5 itself is its lower bound and all the elements which are lying below 5. So it's only 1. Now who are the lower bounds of the element 10? The lower bounds of 10 are 10, 5, 2 and 1. So now let us calculate the lower bounds of set A. The lower bounds of set A are all the elements which are common to them. So 1 is common to it and 5. Right? So now let's work with the second subset. The second subset is B which contains element 5, 10, 2 and 4. So I have circled these elements 5, 10, 2 and 4. So we need to calculate the upper bounds and the lower bound. So let's talk about the upper bounds of the element 5. So you can see upper bounds of 5 and 10 are already written here. So let us calculate the upper bounds of 2. So who are the upper bounds of 2? 2 is its upper bound. 10 is its upper bound. 4 is its upper bound. 20 is its upper bound. 50 is its upper bound and 100 is its upper bound, right? Now, let's calculate the upper bounds of the element 4. So, the upper bounds of 4 are 4, 20 and 100, right? So, only these three elements are related to 4, right? Okay. So, now when we have to calculate the upper bounds of set B, so let's see which all elements are common to all these four elements. Is 2 common? Okay, let's see is 5 common to them. 5 is not common. Is 10 common? 10 is not common. Is 20 common? Yeah, 20 is common. Is 100 common? 100 is common. So that means only the two elements, 20 and 100, should be the upper bounds of set. Right? Okay. So now let's check for the lower bounds now. Now who are the lower bounds of? So lower bounds of 5 and 10 are already written here. So let me write the lower bounds of 2. Now who are the lower bounds of 2? All the elements which are lying below 2. So 2 excels and 1. Who are the lower bounds of the element 4? So the lower bounds are 4, 2 and 1. Right? Now, let's calculate the lower bounds of the set B. The lower bounds of set B are, so you can see that 1 is common to all the 3, 4 elements. And that's it. Only 1 is common. Right? So, the upper bounds are 20 and 100. And lower bounds of set B is only the singleton set. Right? So, again, the answers are given over here. Right. So now you can try these exercises. So this is one more exercise and the subsets are A and B. A is containing the elements D and G 
and the subset B is containing the elements E and S. Right, you can do it on your own and you can check the answers on the next slide. The answers are already given, right? So you can try them and thank you so much for watching it and please subscribe the channel to get the next video and if you have any doubts regarding any exercises so please comment it in the comment section and whatever topics you need further please let me know in the comment section thank you so much